There he is. Is it another interview with them? Uh, yeah. We interviewed a horse just now. Hey, Jake. we, we, met, we right. met your horse. He bit my chair. Really? Yeah. <laughs> oh wow, he's he's uh, he's pissed off. <laughs> hey, Jake guys. Paul, the problem child. Hey. Jake, I gotta start off with this question, okay? That's, that's it's been all fun and games, bowing down, reverence to the legend Anderson Silva. When does that switch flip for you? Saturday, Saturday. Yeah, man, I'm I'm getting that. I'm carrying that Mamba mentality into this fight. Uh, I watched the Redeem team, and uh, he was teammates with Paul Gasol. And they oh, were and Kobe leveled him. Yeah, just took him out. They just won the championship, and he just made the point that look, we could be friends, but this is a competition, yeah. and that's that's the energy I'm carrying into Saturday night. Where did you get the idea for the horse? <laughs> uh, me and my friend were just talking, like, yo, what should we do for the open workout? And <laughs> I was like, I should just ride in on a horse. And now we look, just made it happen. For the guy, how that did it look? Uh, it, it, looked, looked, it looked pretty bad. It, it, so I, he Thanks, he teased that, that we, we we were just told to expect something. We didn't know what. Oh, uh, <laughs> and then I saw the horse, and I was like, wow, this dude keeps on. You look like a badass gaucho. Keeps on doing it. Uh, for the guy that has everything, it might be hard to shop for you. But they bought you a second problem bot. Do we? Does this world need two of them? Yeah, no, that's the better bot. So better, better is my company. Download better. Stop playing with me. And uh, yeah, the better bot. So we got two mascots now. They're gonna fight, actually. Uh, Wait, when, gonna, the when? mascots are going to yeah, fight each other? Yeah, I don't know when, but some point this With week. With the suit on. Yeah. Wow, that's going to get medieval. Hey, up on yeah. that. So there's a, this was a famous story when, when Matt Serra won the season four of The Ultimate Fighter. He had a fight lined up with GSP. It didn't happen, so they had to do a, two camps back-to-back. -back. And when Serra won that fight against all odds, he specifically said it was the second camp back-to-back -back where he got all the extra rounds of sparring, all the extra time in there. That was what he said made the difference. You have had cancellations, changes, and the whole nine yards. You've been training consistently for how long now? Like like a good seven months right. straight. So on the one hand, you have to worry about burnout. On yeah. the other hand, that's a lot of extra rounds. How, how do you navigate that? Yeah, no, the, like everything happens for a reason. And, and the, the fight getting moved, I got you know, a couple extra months to prepare and to get better uh, behind the scenes and behind the curtains. Um, we took a little bit of a break, so my body got to rest, so there wasn't overtraining. Uh, but we got right back to it basically after about a week. Uh, and all of those extra rounds against the Southpaw really, really paid off. Um, and so I'm just excited, man. I'm, I'm excited to, to show the world the, this new fighter that I am. And like I said, I've only been doing this for two and a half years. So, you know, I can get exponentially better in just a couple of but months. But you're taking on more responsibility than a traditional fighter, even a pay-per-view fighter. You're the promoter basically yeah. you're you're doing a lot social media wise as always to promote yourself uh is there any fear that that that, that takes away from the focus at hand no nah, i mean my, my focus is always boxing number one priority when i wake up in the morning and i have you know uh, like 30 people on my team that help me with the content and the posting and all of these things so i get to just show up and do what i do best um but i i have adhd man and i've always done a bunch of things uh, so if I'm just like sitting there after boxing not doing anything I think that would drive me more crazy than wanting to get more stuff done and, and make content or whatever Okay, when you are a promoter as well as a fighter you have to look ahead I thought you strategically put Tommy Fury on one of your undercards back in the day You agreed with yeah. it just to see what it looks like you got Anderson Silva I'm not asking you to look past Anderson Silva but, like, Uriah Hall's here. I saw Nate Diaz walking around. Is there always a potential future Jake Paul opponent lingering behind Jake Paul at all times? Always. Always. Uh, yeah, and I think you you were the first person to really pick up on that. Um, but, yeah, that's, that's how we like to work. Uh, I, I don't look past my opponents, but, like... You plan for the future? Yeah, and I know what I'm capable of in the ring. Um, and so... Yeah, we like to we like to build storylines and, and narratives, and so I think there's a potential people here. There's a couple people here that potentially I could fight in the future. Sorry, this horse is uh, <laughs> <laughs> just all up on me. <laughs> Tell me what you saw on tape when Anderson Silva fought Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. What did you see? I saw a uh, a really good fighter in Anderson Silva, a really good boxer. Um, he uses his range really well. Uh, he had really good defense. He fought in the pocket. He was fighting off of his back foot. He was fighting coming forward. Uh, he had he had power. He was, you know, making uh, Chavez put away his own his punches. Um, 
And, and so, yeah, I mean, I, I saw a lot of good. The yeah, horse is Donald beating you up, does man. not like you at all. Okay? <laughs> He's like, get the fuck out of my mind. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, what's more ridiculous for the two Paul brothers when you were that age of that picture with Anderson? You fighting Anderson Silva on a boxing pay-per-view or your brother main eventing against Roman Reigns at Survivor Series. What's more just like, I can't believe we're in this, 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 you know. I think all of it combined. It like not it doesn't make any sense. And and the fact that I get to do this, you know, combat sports with my brother, he's, you know, fighting one of the biggest names in combat sports in Roman Reigns. I'm fighting Anderson Silva and we're doing it back to back. It's serendipitous, like who planned this? The universe is working together, man, and uh it it's just so cool, man. It's it's so weird. When I got into the ring, I started jumping rope and I just looked up at like all the the billboards here and the screens and I just like giggled because I was just like this is surreal. Like, how did it, we it get here? It is pretty here? surreal. I mean, there's a damn horse chewing on my co-worker. It is surreal. <laughs> I'm cubed. Bro, he's Donald. like, I don't know. Yo, what did he I wants do? A piece of that. All right. You're smart enough that you welcome the haters. You want the haters to buy your pay-per-views, buy your tickets to come see you. So <laughs> haters the, are customers. The critical response You're is this. You're goddamn right. <laughs> okay, Jake, 5-0. and oh. good, good luck. Nice job. But as soon as you lose, that bubble bursts and we'll never see you again in boxing. Your response to that is... No, I mean, I, I think, uh, man, I love this sport. I love this sport so much. I'll always be in this sport. Um, and, and don't judge someone by their wins. Judge them by their losses, you know. And, and it's people like Anthony Joshua who, who lose but come back every single time and, and come back with heart. Um, you, you know, the world can only beat you up if you let it. The world can only put you down if you let it. And... Uh, Man, I don't think there's anything. I don't think I can lose anything in life. I've already won. I've already won at everything I've done. Like, th look at where I'm at, man. Like, I'm 25 years old. I, I wasn't supposed to accomplish this at all. I wasn't supposed to be here. I was counted out. I was always the underdog. I, I you know, was laughed at for my ideas that seemed ludicrous. Um, I already won, man. I could, I could retire from, from the, you know, couple years of work that I've done. Uh, and to me, that means everything. My family is set, my mom's set, my dad's set, and my kids' kids' kids will be set. So that's all that really matters, man. So I'm, I'm already one, and the rest is just bonus right now. Assuming everything goes your way on Saturday, when do you think you get back in there? Because you've had a long time off dealing with all these changes and everything yep. else. When do you want to get back out yeah. there, assuming that goes well? Yeah, if you, like it'll probably be soon. Because it feel for some reason it feels like I've fought this year, but I haven't. Um, so I'll probably try to get back into the ring pretty quickly. Um, and I'm just always training now. It's like a it's a lifestyle. If I wake up and and I don't box, I'm just like not myself. So now I'm almost like I I have to do it just for my own mental clarity and um, my own peace of mind. All right, let's close with this. And it's always a pleasure to chat with you. Your fights up to this point have either been early knockouts or in the two Woodley fights. They were kind of technical. There was a lot of adjusting. If your fight with Anderson Silva just becomes a war, you okay with that? You, you ready 100%. for that? 100%. That's why I rode in on the horse. <laughs> I'm ready for battle. Uh, I'm ready to go out on my, on my shield. And uh, he's going to have to bring a whole lot of stuff to get me to quit. Wow. There it is right there. I can't wait. The problem child, Jake Paul, Saturday night, Showtime, pay-per-view, Anderson Silva. Best of luck to you. This is Thank you guys. This has nice already you, been Jake. a fun show. Thank All you, right, guys. This Let's has go. been wild. Shout Let's out go. to the Donald. See you Saturday. Shouts, bro. There he is, the star of the show, Jake Paul.